they developed a drug that boosted the production of nitric oxide in the nerves that go to the uh, erectile tissue. The work was great. I didn't know about it until it was published. The FDA fast-tracked that work, and in 1998, the drug sildenafil was marketed, approved by the FDA, with the trade name of Viagra. Mm. So, And that was based exclusively on wow. uh, my work. And wow. Pfizer also nicknamed me uh, the father of Viagra. <laughs> My name is Lou Ignaro, also called Professor Lou Ignaro. Uh, I've been at UCLA School of Medicine for many years, about 30 years or so, as a professor in pharmacology in the Department of uh, Medicine, where I did a lot of basic research and also taught medical students uh, what they needed to know about pharmacology. And so in my career, I focused on the discovery we made about nitric oxide, or NO, which is extremely important in, in maintaining your health, especially your cardiovascular health and improving your longevity. I've always had a passion for this. I've always been highly motivated in doing these sorts of things. And I want to encourage all of you that you should pay attention to your nitric oxide and what you can do in order to boost your nitric oxide production is two simple things. To lead a, a healthy uh, diet, eat a healthy balanced diet, and engage in physical activity as much as you can. This will keep you healthy and certainly will improve your uh, longevity. And that's what I've tried to do on this wonderful podcast, the Ever Forward uh, Radio, in which I talked about how building up nitric oxide is so important to your longevity. Three, two, one. Well, Dr. Lou, thank you so much for coming in. Welcome to the show. Um, really a privilege to sit down with uh, such a scientific legend here. Um, so thank you. It's great to be here, Chase. Thanks for the invitation. And, you know, your discovery of nitric oxide in the human body is uh, one that as I was reading your story, it kind of hit me like, oh, this is how scientific discoveries are made. There's somebody just with a curiousness and scratching that itch. And then all of a sudden it just hits them about something that already exists. We just don't know where or mm -hmm. how or why. Um, so before we kind of dive into the origin story, can you please just give us a high level breakdown of what is nitric oxide? What, what is the NO? What is this component? Sure. Well, nitric oxide actually has been known for hundreds of years to uh, the chemists. Uh, nitric oxide is a gaseous substance. Mm -hmm. And it's very simple. It consists of one atom of nitrogen, and one atom of oxygen, or NO. In fact, nitric oxide is often referred to as NO. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to say. But uh, this is a gas that's uh, been present in our atmosphere for the longest time. And uh, it's not a pollutant by itself, but it can be oxidized mm -hmm. whenever lightning strikes, for example, or it, it increases the react reactivity between NO and oxygen to form nitrogen dioxide, or NO2, and I think many people have heard of that. That's acid rain, and that's very, very toxic. Okay. Okay, but the NO itself is uh, is not toxic. Uh, the interesting thing about NO is that n no one thought that it would have any relevance or bearing, uh, in, you know, in, in the human body for a number of reasons. One, uh, you know, what would it do? There was no information on that. And also, it's very reactive. It's what we call a free radical, mm -hmm. which means it lasts for only a couple of seconds after it's formed, and then it disappears. So how can something with that kind of reactivity exist in the body? Okay, so the way we discovered that it was important was very simply looking at how another drug works. The drug nitroglycerin, mm -hmm. everybody knows nitroglycerin, it's the explosive Alfred Nobel used to make dynamite, but it 
In addition, nitroglycerin is used clinically to lower the blood pressure and prevent an impending heart attack. Mm -hmm. comes as tiny tablets, you take it, and within 20 seconds it works. Well, for a hundred years, nobody knew how nitroglycerin worked. And it was my laboratory that showed that when you take nitroglycerin, your arteries metabolize or convert it to NO. Mm -hmm. So then we bought some NO gas. You can buy it. It comes in a cylinder, just like CO2 or oxygen or nitrogen. And we studied this many years ago in the laboratory. And we found that this nitric oxide gas is a vasodilator. It widens it the blood vessels, the vessels to lower the blood pressure. And we did one experiment after the next and showed that if you're just about ready to have a, um, a, a coronary or or uh, uh, myocardial ischemia or heart attack, that nitric oxide will dilate the vessels and improve blood flow to the heart, deliver more oxygen, and the person won't get a heart attack. And so that's how we first came across nitric oxide, uh, working out the mechanism of action of nitroglycerin. And then, you know, being a pharmacologist, we study the actions of different chemicals and drugs in the body. So I kept studying nitric oxide to see what else it does. And we found that it prevented blood clotting, mm. it increased blood flow, it did many things. And so I developed this idea that, you know, this is fascinating. I wonder if our bodies produce nitric oxide. Maybe it doesn't just come from nitroglycerin, this is an outside source. Maybe our bodies actually make nitric oxide Which is because it's so thought, potent. Right? It's a very yeah. wild thought. It's it's what we call thinking outside the box, yeah, I'm curious which how, I love to do. I'm with you, but I'm curious, how did how did you even come to that thought? Well, I mean, we're here we're testing nitric oxide and we find that vanishingly small amounts, I mean, tiny, tiny amounts lower the blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Tiny, tiny amounts prevent uh, the blood from clotting where you do not want it to clot. Okay. So you were probably linking that yeah, to if these yeah, tiny amounts are already existing. Exactly. So okay. I said to myself, wouldn't it be something if our bodies could produce mm -hmm. nitric oxide so that what would it do if our bodies produced it? Well, it might control blood pressure and prevent hypertension. Uh, it might prevent unwanted blood clotting, therefore prevent um, a myocardial ischemia, which is due to a blood clot in the heart, or it might prevent a stroke, mm. which is a blood clot in the brain. Mm. And I thought, well, you know, when we exercise, for example, we get vasodilation or widening of the arteries in the limbs where we're exercising Just in order to deliver to more blood, more, yeah. carrying more oxygen, more nutrients. Mm. And so I kept thinking, well, wouldn't it be something? That's what I kept saying for like 10 years. Wouldn't it be something, Wouldn't it be something if our body produced this <laughs> molecule? So I began to look for it. It took, it took a while, but I eventually, my laboratory, when I say I, I mean my lab. I could do nothing by myself. It was my lab. I ran the lab. We discovered that our the, the inner lining of the arteries, it's called the endothelium, the inner lining of the arteries make nitric oxide. No way. We had already determined what nitric oxide does. Mm. So this was the icing on the cake. N our arteries make nitric oxide for the purpose of preserving mm. cardiovascular he uh, health, you know, preventing cardiovascular disease. And it was that discovery uh, in 1986 that mm. landed me a trip to Stockholm. And I, I remember reading your story, um, this moment, this epiphany, you were kind of just yelling out loud, uh, it was it EDRF is NO. Yeah, EDRF yes, yes, yes. Yeah, right. And it's just kind of this, this realization that this thing has been staring me in the face of what I've been looking for the whole time, which I think is so fascinating so right. many times when it comes right. to discoveries of the human body. And human uh, exactly. I didn't go into it in that kind of detail, but uh, the, the, someone else had discovered that there's some kind of relaxing factor made by the endothelial cells, and he called it endothelium-derived relaxing factor, EDRF. He didn't know right? what it was. Nobody knew what it was. So, so that was our, my hint that, oh my goodness, maybe this is the nitric oxide, you know, that I've been looking for. 
because it's a relaxing substance, right? It's a vasodilator. And this other guy showed that, uh, and his name was Bob Furchgott, by the way. He shared the prize with me. So he showed it was unstable and that it was a, a vasodilator. And so we put two and two together, and uh, we went after the chemical identification of this factor, which was very difficult, and we showed it was nitric oxide. Amazing. Well, I mean, you kind of hinted at it, and you talked a little bit about the cardiovascular benefits, but why is this element, why is this discovery so important for the human race? Like, what does it really mean to know that this thing exists and how it operates? You know, it's interesting. Once in some, when some discoveries are made, it's, it's, um, it's instantaneously uh, uh, reasonable you know, to answer that question as to why it's so important. When other discoveries are made, years have to go by before the pieces, all the pieces are put together. So when, when we discovered that our bodies produce nitric oxide to protect us against cardiovascular health, what that taught us is that our normal physiology mm-hmm. is that our arteries better be healthy enough so that our endothelial cells, of which we have trillions of them throughout the body, uh, must constantly make nitric oxide in order to keep the blood flowing, in order to keep the blood pressure uh-huh. from getting too high, mm-hmm. in order to prevent stroke and prevent heart attack by preventing the aggregation of platelets and, and preventing uh, 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 the blood from clotting. So this was the normal physiology. But then what happened is that we and others, many others, showed that we asked the question, okay, this is important. Nitric oxide does all these protective things. We want more. C- can we buy nitric oxide and take it? No, you can't. It's a gas. It comes in a, in, in a, in a cylinder, and it's uh, extremely poisonous when it's in a very high concentration. Mm-hmm. You can't take a tablet or a pill or a liquid because nitric oxide lasts for only two seconds. So how, how sure. are you going to make it? Sure. So the only thing you could do is ask your body to make more. What can we do? What drugs can we take? What drugs can be invented to stimulate nitric oxide production? So many drug companies were trying to do this. They were not very successful. But then we discovered, we meaning the the scientific community, a bunch of nutritionists actually Mm -hmm. showed that here are the two main things that boost nitric oxide in our bodies. Healthy, balanced nutrition, physical activity. Mm -hmm. And then who thousands of papers, <laughs> who would have free. ever yeah. thought, yeah. And, and then thousands of papers have been published on this. So if you eat the right foods from the f- right food groups and avoid the garbage, and if you do a certain amount of physical activity, I use that instead of <clears throat> the word exercise, because mm-hmm. when I say exercise, everybody goes to sleep. Mm-hmm. But if I say physical activity, you know, they're listening to what I'm talking about. And I am talking about exercise. Mm -hmm. It's been shown by so many people, for example, that the more vigorous your exercise, the more nitric oxide your arteries produce. And it makes so much sense. And certainly, you know, you work out, you're great, you're, you're in great shape. You would appreciate this. When you're, when you're working out, your cardiac output goes up. You're pumping more blood. There's more blood flowing through your arteries. Mm-hmm. Okay. That increase in the force of the blood flowing through the arteries stimulates the endothelial cells to make more nitric oxide. Amazing. So to make, when you make more nitric oxide, the arteries in your legs, let's say you're running, will die. I would never be running. To deliver, or or weightlifting, (laughs) anything. That would deliver more blood, therefore more nutrients to the muscles. Right. And also, it would remove all the uh, pain-producing metabolites of working out from your muscles. And so, the more you work out, the more NO you make physiologically to improve blood flow to the working skeletal muscle. But, and here's the important but, that same nitric oxide... Is the nitric oxide that keeps your blood pressure normal, prevents stroke, prevents heart attack. It's a multi-use. Therefore, exercise is good for your health. For Mm. 5,000 years, people have said, you can trace this back, people have said, exercise is good for your health, but nobody knew why. Mm. And now we know that at least one answer is nitric oxide 
production. It's one hell of a I, I think that that's great. Just in itself, you know, yeah. th- that I get goosebumps whenever I think about it. it it's you know? great. I, I'm with you. I mean, I've been in the health and wellness space for so long as a professional, but also someone who's just lived an active life. And I know when I am physically active, when I'm exercising, when I'm a body in motion, I feel my best, I perform my best. And I just know that I'm going to be like that, or I, I'm going to be higher probability to be like that for right. longer periods of right. time. Exactly. But you're absolutely right when we can actually say, okay, anecdotally, cool. But scientifically, here's exactly why. Exactly why. There's scientific proof for that. You know, yeah, you don't just yeah. say it. This is the scientific evidence. And like I said, thousands of uh, good papers in, in, in peer-reviewed journals have been uh, published showing exactly what the mechanism is and how the enzyme that makes nitric oxide goes up and on and on and on. And so that's how physical activity, that's why physical activity is so important in for your health mm-hmm. it channels through the nitric oxide there may be other reasons i'm sure i'm sure physical activity stimulates something else as well but we don't know what that something else is yet so let's take advantage of what we know mm-hmm. we know it boosts nitric oxide and so we're good but then we go to the other side with a healthy diet we have to be sure that our endothelial cells in our arteries are in good enough shape to make mm all of that nitric oxide when you're exercising. And that's when the healthy diet, healthy nutrition um, comes in, for sure. Yeah, I was going to ask, you mentioned nutrition um, being a contributing factor for nitric oxide um, creation, maintenance. Of course. What what role uniquely does a quality diet have in our nitric oxide? Yes, let, let, let me explain that. Now, at the risk, is, at the risk of... Um, Making a few enemies, which I never like to do. I do not believe in any specific diet. Same. Likewise. When I say diet, it's what you eat. I have friends who just eat only protein and no vegetables. Well, if you want to end your life earlier, go right ahead. And then there are those who eat carbs and don't touch protein. Mm. And I don't get that. The thing is, you want a balanced diet. You know, we have protein, carbohydrate, and and we have fats. Mm -hmm. And there's unhealthy categories of each and healthy categories of each. You want to balance uh, them out. But but, but when you eat protein, you want to eat healthy protein. Now, everybody loves a juicy steak with lots of fat on it. No, In fact, I even had one last night. But I only do that once every couple of months. I don't do that several times a week. Protein's important because protein contains amino acids. And your, your digestive system breaks down the protein to 20 or so amino acids that exist in the body. And two of those amino acids are essential to make nitric oxide. There it is. Nitric there. oxide is made from an amino acid that has kind of a funny name. It's called arginine. Mm. arginine is required to make NO. So if you don't eat enough Mm. protein, you're not going to make enough NO. And then there's another amino acid called citrulline, which you get from all kinds of melons when you eat it. It's, it's, uh, doesn't come from, you know, protein comes from fruit. And that citrulline in the body is converted to arginine Mm. and the arginine is converted to NO. So it's like a circle. Yeah. The whole process. Okay. So, and that's why protein is important. And then, uh, of course, um, fats are important. The healthy fats, the unsaturated fats, because they contain a lot of what I'm sure everybody has heard of, omega-3s, mm-hmm. omega-3 fatty acids. The healthy fats. The healthy fats. The present health in every fats. kind of fish product, mm-hmm. uh, any kind of shellfish, fish product. Also, omega-3s are present in fairly large amounts in avocados. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's good. And uh, the omega-3s uh, strengthen the, um, how should I say it? They make the endothelial cells more healthy. They make okay. them healthier so that the membranes are healthier, and it's the membranes of the endothelial cells that make the nitric oxide. Oh, so so eating, uh, eating a fish-rich diet is the best thing you can do to keep those cells healthy to make a nitric oxide. And then finally, you've heard your physician and many other people saying, don't forget to eat your, or your mother's, Mm -hmm. don't forget to eat your fruits and vegetables, and you should have several portions of fruit and vegetables a day. And here is the reason why that is absolutely so true, and this has been discovered over the past 15 years. Fruit and vegetables contain antioxidants, 
which combat those free radicals you were talking about earlier. Thank you, yeah. sir. Yeah. Abs- if I still have a, had a laboratory, I've retired now, mm-hmm. I'd ask you to come help and work in the laboratory. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. But yes, yeah. the fruit and the vegetables have antioxidants, and they are anti or against oxidation. So they protect the nitric oxide against this oxidative destruction. And, and, and that has been demonstrated many times in the lab. We, we've published many papers on that. So you want to eat as many antioxidants as possible. And we know of so many. Vitamin C is a great antioxidant. Vitamin E is okay. But vitamin C is one of the best. And what I always tell people is, remember the color of the foods that you eat. Mm-hmm. I always ask them, what, what color of fruits and vegetables did you eat today? We want the darker the better, right? Exactly. Yeah. The darker the better, because if you look at the chemistry, which nobody likes chemistry, okay? But if you look at the chemicals themselves, the antioxidant chemicals, mm. they have a color. Mm. The richer the color, the more powerful the antioxidant activity. No, That's just why, the way it is. It's just chemically how they kind of show yes. up. Yes. Okay. Well, I don't want to get into the refraction of light and refraction of light, but, mm-hmm. you know, a color of a substance depends upon how the light is refracted right. and broken into its individual components. And so it just turns out that the stronger the antioxidant, the more it re, re, uh, it actually directs the light in a certain direction and gives it a certain certain colors of the prism. And there are numerous examples. I mean, so you, you might say, to someone, you might ask them, so based on what I just told you, what would you think would be the fruit that has the most powerful anti- antioxidant activity? One answer could be pomegranates. They're pretty good. Pomegranate. If you, if you get a yeah. pomegranate yeah. Uh, juice on your white shirt, yeah. Forget it. it it's a lot over. In my house, my wife's <laughs> oh, so we I have see. a lot of pomegranates. Oh, yeah, see, that's well. anar. Yeah, and right. Ours, exactly. Yeah. Very, so very healthy. But not only pomegranate, also blueberry. Any kind of berry. Blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, tart that's, cherry. Right. Yeah, that's tart cherry. Loaded. All loaded with antioxidants. Now that then I'm going to the vegetable category. Okay. Although you could classify, you know, many people classify actually a beet as a fruit, but, but it still has a lot of antioxidant yeah, properties. Yeah, lots of antioxidant properties. It's one of the ve- it's one of the vegetables with the strongest antioxidant mm-hmm. properties are beets. Because I try to the, have beets, you know, every day. Makeup. Yeah, because of the chemical makeup, okay. and also broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kale arugula, all the good stuff, at least I think so. I'm with you. All, yeah. all, all that's loaded with antioxidants. So my wife and I, we, we, we eat those vegetables and, and fruit uh, every day. Mm. You know, just a small portion here and there. Uh, often for dinner, I like to make a, a kale uh, salad. Just kale with balsamic vinegar, olive oil, a little salt and pepper. Oh, olive yeah. oil, yeah. healthy fat. See, it's, it's fat, but it's healthy fat. You know, we don't use saturated fat I remember hearing, <laughs> on anything we make. I remember hearing a few years ago, um, resveratrol kind, kind mm-hmm. of being the new kid on the block in terms of antioxidant potential sure. power and being a, the, the powerhouse. Of course. Is resveratrol course. still kind of king antioxidant? Up there? Well, not the king anymore. Resveratrol, the discovery was important because um, we didn't discover it. Other, other people discovered it who were wondering why uh, a Mediterranean diet is one of the healthiest diets on our planet. And they, they boiled it down to, um, they eat m- m- a lot of fish. Which you they eat some about, meat, yeah. but eat a lot of fish. They also drink a lot of wine, red wine. Red wine is made from red grapes. Red grapes contain an antioxidant called resveratrol in the inner part of the skin mm-hmm. of the red grape. The white grapes don't have resveratrol, but the red grapes do. And so that was isolated, purified, it was tested in animals and humans, and it was found that, yes, it's an antioxidant that can boost nitric oxide. But the caveat was that you would have to consume several bottles of wine to benefit from the Some action might be trying of, <laughs> of resveratrol. Yeah. However, you can buy <laughs> resveratrol yeah. in capsules. Mm-hmm. So it's concentrated in capsules. Mm-hmm. And all I drink enough red wine, so I don't have to buy the capsules. But for those people who don't like to drink uh, red wine, yeah, buy some resveratrol. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it'll, it'll work. It certainly 
can't hurt. And if you take the res- resveratrol together with other antioxidants, mm. they all work together. It increases the bioavailability. Yeah, it increases the bioavailability of nitric oxide. There, because every, every fruit, every vegetable has a different antioxidant. So if you consume lots of portions of different fruit and vegetables, you're consuming maybe hundreds of different antioxidants. But they're all doing the same thing. They're blocking the oxidation or destruction of nitric oxide, thereby boosting the levels of nitric oxide. And as I mentioned before, when your cells make nitric oxide, that that NO is stable only for a few seconds. So it has to constantly be doing it, right? Oh, it's constant. That's the the key. That's why you have to keep your arterial lining or endothelial cells healthy at all times. Mm -hmm. It's constantly making nitric oxide. Feeding them antioxidants will help, will increase the stability of nitric oxide such that uh, without antioxidants, let's say in an experiment in the laboratory, NO might be stable for two seconds. Mm -hmm. But in the presence of vitamin C, or in the presence of uh, antioxidants from pomegranate, mm. we did those experiments, so I can state that, uh, NO would be stable for 20 seconds. Huh. So you're increasing stability by tenfold. Wow. Same thing in the wow. body. Yeah. So keep eating the fruit and vegetables, yeah. keep eating the healthy protein to get your arginine and citrulline, mm. and uh, you're yeah. going to boost NO. So that's how I bring in you know, healthy diet, healthy, uh, balanced nutrition. And I don't like to stick with just one specific diet. Just, Absolutely. Just yeah. mix it all yeah. together. If, if watching your weight, if maintaining a certain weight is your goal mm-hmm. as well, then you have to add another factor into the healthy diet, and that's caloric restriction. Of course, yeah. That's it. Calories in, calories exactly. out. Exactly. So you may find that deficit. eating a very healthy diet yeah. is just not enough to fill me, fill me up. You know, well, sorry, what is your goal? Mm. If your goal mm. is to maintain your weight, Important question. cut back on the amount you eat. When you feel yourself hungry, and that happens to me, mm. especially during COVID, when I'm not you know, physically active as much as before. I don't yeah. go to the gym anymore. And, you know, when I'm bicycling outside, I have a mask on. This was last year. So, you know, you're limited to what you can do. Uh, I, I would, I, I, you know, I, I would simply um, just do as much as you could do a- at home, you know, to maintain your nitric oxide production. I, th- I think that's, that's very important to do. How familiar are you with cordyceps in their relation to nitric oxide. Are you familiar with that mushroom, functional mushroom cordyceps? Uh, a little bit, but not, not much. Uh, maybe if you could highlight well, something, I could talk about it. It's a, it's a functional mushroom. <laughs> okay. It, um, actually, it was discovered um, in the Himalayas, I believe, by this group of, you know, I don't know how, how many, you know, maybe a couple hundred years ago, um, this group of farmers, mountaineer men, um, noticed that their goats, I believe it was goats, after they would sure. eat of like this certain bush or this certain area, okay. they would just be, for lack of a better term, wired. They would have energy, stamina, endurance, um, their recovery. Well, I don't know how a goat, I don't know how you would monitor recovery on a goat, but yeah, um, well, it depends they, what you're studying. True, sure. true. But then they kind of look closer and they notice that they were eating these particular mushrooms yeah. growing yeah. out of these, actually, cordyceps typically grows out of the dead bugs. That were then feeding on bushes and plants. I see. And I so see. it's this this mushroom, this really wild mushroom that grows out that is a natural nitric oxide boost. I see. I see. Increases dilation, all this stuff. Okay. So then, very good. You know, very I good. I've been using functional mushrooms for a long time. Cordyceps being one of them. Um, sometimes I'll even use cordyceps as like a, a pre workout. Um, really? Oh, that, I'll, that's I'll use fascinating. It before and even post. And actually, the most the most data I've seen on cordyceps in terms of boosting recovery and helping nitric oxide production yeah, is when it's yeah. consumed post rigorous exercise because ah, you're in ah. a really, well, your body's in that recovery state. Of course. You're still vasodilated. Your muscles are very saturated. You know, your heart rate is up. Cardiac output is up. Yes. So there's a lot yes. more blood and pressure flowing to all areas of your body. Right. Okay. Then okay. supplemented with cordyceps, whether 
in a supplement or you eat them, it just increases it significantly. You know, that's that's interesting. Well. Now that you mention it, I, I I guess I didn't recall the name, but I have some friends uh, actually in in the UK and also mm. in Sweden who uh, do the same thing. Oh, okay. uh, especially okay. my friends in Sweden. You know, they're all nine feet tall, huge guys. <laughs> they run for hours at a time. They're probably uh, eating off the same bush that the goats were. Uh, you know, <laughs> and so they what they were doing two things though. This is interesting, and I didn't quite pick up on the on the mushroom part. So I'm going to have to read up more mm. on. Uh, mushrooms and, um, cordyceps, and yeah, cordyceps and and uh, nitric oxide, but in addition to the cordyceps, they were consuming uh, beetroot juice. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. the the beets. They made the juice from mm-hmm. the beets, and and they were drinking that because they had determined in their laboratory at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm that beetroot juice just incredibly boost the production and, and dark action cherry, of tart cherry juice yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Of, of nitric oxide. And so these guys were taking the cordyceps plus the beetroot juice. And so I remember when I went to visit them, they had me try both. And the cordyceps were good. I, I tried them. Good, good is uh, is a <laughs> is too much. Cordyceps are pretty pretty nasty. They're, they're pretty nasty. I, <laughs> they're I, I very, was very trying to be kind, but <laughs> mixed with the right. But products. I preferred them w- much more mm. over the beetroot juice. I don't know if you've ever tasted beetroot juice, but uh, you, yeah. you better be sure to be next to a toilet when you when you do. It's pretty I intense. mean, that stuff is so intense mm. that you know. I mean. I don't, I don't understand why it has to be so bad. Beets taste great. Mm-hmm. You know, you might as well just boil some beets be like a, like and eat the beets. Oh, it's very concentrated. Yeah, yeah. And, but it could be made better, I think. They could remove uh, some of the bitter tasting things and, and, and keep in what does boost nitric oxide. I don't know. But, uh, as you can see, many different kinds of foods, edibles, mm-hmm. uh, can be found to boost nitric oxide. Mm-hmm. And so I think that that's great. I mean, I, I, I'm sure that's why those foods contain these substances oh, because yeah. humans and, and other primates too yeah. and other animals, dogs, cats, whatever, need the nitric oxide. I mean, we have, uh, we've had golden retrievers for years and years and I give them, I don't take supplements myself because the foods I take have everything I want, but I give my uh, golden retrievers arginine, citrulline, really? vitamin C, pomegranate capsules. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And they're great. Uh-huh. You can see them. They shed less fur, so it's easier on the vacuum cleaners. So uh, we're going to keep that up. Yeah. What are other some What are some other health benefits beyond the ones we've already kind of touched on that might really perk up the ears and pique the curiosity of the listener as to all right, I really want to take this no stuff more seriously mm-hmm. in terms mm-hmm. of more regular physical activity, these certain right. foods we've been talking about. Right. Is right. there something unique to NO and longevity that might sure. be of interest? What's going on? Oh my God, yes. Well, I think the key to um, a lot of research going on in this area, but unfortunately not enough being talked about to the public. So I'm glad we're talking about that here. Mm. But um, one of the keys to increasing longevity, of course, is to maintain cardiovascular and mental health. I mean, you know, what does longevity mean? I, In my opinion, longevity, I mean, the definition, it means how long you live. But you know, I want to have great longevity, but I don't want to live to a hundred years old if I can't walk, if I can't think, if I can't, you want to maintain a quality of life. So here's where nitric oxide comes in. If you could keep your nitric oxide production and action at least at a normal level, you will prevent the onset and development of those conditions and diseases that shorten longevity. And clearly, the leading cause of death in the United States and Europe and almost now throughout the world is cardiovascular disease, 90% of which is avoidable and preventable. Cancer is a hereditary disease. 90% of cancers you can't do anything about. But 90% of cardiovascular disease you can prevent. Mm -hmm. You are in control of your own destiny. You have to embark on a healthy diet and keep doing the physical activity and just use a little simple logic and you will increase your longevity. So so that's the key. And the key 
I mean, we're talking about nitric oxide. There may be other explanations. I am not saying nitric oxide is the only substance in our body that's important for longevity. It's the only substance we know of right now in our body that's important for longevity. So, so, you know, you want to boost your production and action of NO in any way possible. And as more research is done, it's very important for a scientist to pass it on to the uh, community, whether it's writing it in the form of a book or having a podcast such as this one uh, or or any other way, um, just to try to get the people convinced that healthy diet and exercise will increase your longevity. Who would have thunk? Who would have thunk it? (laughs) But I find it so difficult sometimes to get people... To believe it, or maybe not to believe it, because then I'll say, do you question a scientist who have done this? Now, they won't go that far, although some have. But, got quite a track record. You know, yeah. you know, it's not just me. It's just everybody else. It's now common knowledge mm-hmm. that a healthy diet and exercise increase longevity by boosting nitric oxide. And even if, you di- even if it had nothing to do with nitric oxide, if you didn't believe that, I mean, the evidence is there that healthy diet and physical activity increases longevity, you know, 10 to 60 percent. Mm-hmm. So what are you going to do about that? that no, nobody made up that data. I mean, that's, that's all, that's oh, all true. Mean, look at the now overwhelming and unfortunate numbers about comorbidities related to COVID deaths. Sure. I, I, last sure. I checked, I think it was, what, 80-some, if not more percent right, of right. COVID deaths were Obese people. Yeah, we're and obese significant people. Significant comorbidities. Obese that people. Were and then, if, if I may say a, a word about please, that, please, it's yeah. so important yeah. because when people are obese, now obese does not mean you're triple your normal weight. Mm. Obese can just mean, you know, 20, 30 percent overweight. You don't have to be really big to be dangerously obese. Obese doesn't directly mean 300 pounds. No, 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 no. But obesity is a problem. Mm. Why? Because you have a lot of fatty tissue in your body. And guess what? Sorry, but nitric oxide does not do well in fat. It gets why is that? It's, it's, it's readily decomposed because of oxidative metabolism. Fats, especially saturated fats, your fat in your body is saturated. That's just the way it is. Solid at room temperature, right? There you go. And and what it does, very good. It causes destruction of nitric oxide, and so not oh, only slows it down, but it destroys it. Destroys it. it. Oh, it speeds up its destruction. So that the body's nitric oxide production cannot keep up with the needs for the nitric oxide. Well, that's why 95% of people who are obese go on to develop cardiovascular disease, hypertension. Why? Because there's not enough nitric oxide made in the arteries or, or, or working from the arteries to keep the blood pressure down to normal. I had no idea so directly related to Oh my normal. God, oh my goodness. Obesity causes a lot of stroke because there's not enough NO made to protect the arteries against the um, formation of cholesterol plaques that come from that the fat sense. in yeah, the okay. arteries. Yeah. The NO protects your arteries against the, the stickiness of the mm-hmm. plaques uh, onto the uh, arteries. And also physical activity, again, boosts nitric oxide production, which obese people will need mm-hmm. in order to try to prevent the onset of those cardiovascular diseases. Wow. So disease processes can can provoke this marked decrease in nitric oxide. That's wow. absolutely right. Obesity will do that. Obesity will inevitably lead to diabetes. Mm-hmm. Well, when you have diabetes... At least pre-diabetes. Yes. Yeah, for sure. You've messed up all your hormones mm-hmm. uh, that work together with nitric oxide to make more nitric oxide and increase the action of nitric oxide. And when you have the hormonal imbalance in diabetes you're going to have also the imbalance of the nitric oxide. So wow. so you, you can see, isn't it amazing yeah, how yeah. these things All thanks to are your linked work and your, your together. Team's That's incredible. Yeah, well, you know, I, I got to give credit to so yeah. many other people. Yes, we made the original discovery that NOs produced in our bodies mm. to protect us against cardiovascular disease and that according to the Nobel Foundation not my <laughs> words uh, created an what did they say created an avalanche of research yeah. oh, that led course. to 
all of the other discoveries. So I thank all these other people who believed in me and nitric oxide at the beginning and went on to show the the incredible uh, actions of yeah, NO. Yeah, yeah. And there's also another action of NO, which I will take the credit for discovering by <laughs> okay. myself, which we haven't talked about yet. What's that? Erectile function. That's right. That was another big part of your work. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. We can, I mean, we need blood flow. We need, uh, we need a lot of things going on. We need right? a lot of things yeah. going on. And so uh, may I tell that story very, Please, very absolutely. briefly? Yes. Um, a urologist friend of mine at UCLA came up to me, I think it was 1990. And he said to me, he said, Lou, um, uh, do you know what the neurotransmitter is? that get released from the nerves that causes penile erection. Uh, see, every nerve releases a chemical mm. that every nerve is attached to an organ. Mm. Every okay. nerve releases a chemical that produces an effect on that organ, whatever the uh, organ function may be. In, in the erectile tissue of the penis, uh, those nerves release a chemical that dilates all the blood vessels in the penis so that the penis can become engorged with blood. That's what an erection is. Mm -hmm. Okay, but no one knew what the neurotransmitter chemical was. So he came to me and he asked me, do I know what it is? And I said, Jake, I said, uh, you're the urologist. <laughs> I'm a pharmacologist. Why are you, asking me? you tell me what the neurotransmitter is. And he says, it's not known. I said, impossible. He said, it's not known. So I went to the library that's the way I am, you know. And I read and read and read. It's not known. And in those days, in 1990, there were no drugs available to treat the hundreds of right. millions of men with impotency or erectile dysfunction. Hundreds of millions. Okay? And I said, hmm, let's... So I, I think like a scientist. All right, why is the neurotransmitter not known? Let me read about the nerves. I read about the nerves, and I see that the nerves belong to a certain class of neurons, not important what they are. And then I remembered that one of my friends in England was studying these nerves, but in the brain. Mm. And he, right after we discovered that arteries make NO, this guy in England showed that certain nerves in the brain make NO. And he thought it might have something to do with improving <coughs> uh, memory, yeah. improving memory and preventing dementia. That's what he thought. But this was a long time ago, 1989. And then I said, okay, well, those nerves are in the brain, but the same class of nerves in the periphery that go to the penis, why couldn't they also release mm. NO as the neurotransmitter? It would make sense. And knows a vasodilator. Now we know how it functions. Absolutely. And now we know how it functions. I worked with my urologist. His team set up the tissues we needed to use in the laboratory, which I won't get into, erectile tissue. They had to get them from the humans who had just passed away. And, was, you know, I won't discuss mm -hmm. that. But anyway, we did the experiments. And lo and behold, within two months, we showed that nitric oxide is the neuro transmitter. Wow. So we published that in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is a very high, powerful, key clinical journal. And um, and that work, I mean, we're not a drug company at UCLA. We have a small lab. But drug companies read that work, like Pfizer, Pfizer Pharmaceuticals, and they looked at that and looked at that. And so they developed a drug that boosted the production of nitric oxide in the nerves that go to the uh, erectile tissue. The work was great. I didn't know about it until it was published. The FDA fast-tracked that work. And in 1998, the drug sildenafil was marketed, approved by the FDA, with the trade name of Viagra. Mm. So, And that was based exclusively on wow. uh, my work. And wow. Pfizer also nicknamed me 
uh, the father of Viagra, <laughs> which, <laughs> which used, my mom was alive at the time and my well, mom used to really get upset. She says, why don't you tell them to stop saying that already? <laughs> Man, we owe N.O. to saving so many lives and erections of the same Think time. about that. <laughs> Think about all this molecule yeah. does. And you know, there's still discoveries made. You know, every month, every year. So God knows what's going to be happening down the line. Yeah. It's in, an incredible universal molecule that is made by so many cells everywhere to produce so many different effects. And, you know, who'd have thunk it back then? Well, Dr. Lou, this has been an incredible conversation. Um, I could pick your brain for hours. And I'm sure whatever we know next about NO, I'm sure you're going to have something to do with. So <laughs> I'll just follow you for all the, the new findings. Um, but to kind of bring it home for the sure. show, you know, you know, you were telling me that you were taking a listen to some other episodes. So I'm sure this question might sound familiar ever forward. Um, the messages I talk about, the guests that I have on the show are to highlight a unique, air, a unique area of our sure. wellness so to sure. help us move forward in life and even in just one way to live a life ever for it, as I say. So when you hear those two words, what does that mean to you, sir? Well, what it means to me is, is, you know, you have only one life to live. I mean, your own life. And you should really take good care of your life and do whatever uh, it takes to improve your life that will improve your longevity. It's very simple to do. You don't have to buy any drugs take any medication, just live a healthy lifestyle. And that's the message I really want to get across. Just think about it, live a healthy lifestyle, and move forward. And if you don't want to move forward for yourself, then move forward for your friends, your community, and your family. Beautiful answer, sir. Thank you so much. Um, well, the book I'll have down in the video notes and show notes for everybody, Dr. No, the discovery that led to a Nobel Prize in Viagra. Um, and uh, I really enjoyed your story. Uh, thank also you. Enjoy, thank I you. always enjoy hearing about places that I've lived and visited. So uh, great. shout great. out the DMV area. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Chase. That was great. I really enjoyed this.